On today's episode of Locked On Angels, we're recapping last night's win against the Marlins. We're comparing the young core of the Orioles to the young core of the Angels. And we're asking, are they the same? And we're sharing the beginnings of an interesting interview that Sam Blum had with The Athletic and GM PM. No April Fools on this episode. It's time to get locked on with Mike and John. And this is Locked On Angels. You are Locked On Angels, your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. You can find us anywhere you get your podcasts, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Sirius XM by searching Locked On Angels. And if you'd like to give back to the Super Halo Bros for all the Super Halo content, here's some things that you can do. Leave us a rate and a review on Apple Podcasts. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not subscribed already, please subscribe and become a Locked On Everydayer. And whether you're watching or listening, come over to YouTube, leave a comment. It's one of the best ways to get in touch with us and be a part of the conversation. Happy Tuesday to you, and thank you for being here for this episode of Locked On Angels, where it's your team every day. You've got the Frisch Brothers here with you, a.k.a. the Super Halo Bros. My name is John, and that's my brother Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother John. Mike, how was your uh, April Fool's Day? Did you get- it was fantastic. How you was got- yours? I got through it without getting fooled, so... <laughs> so did go. I. And apparently some people did who were listeners and viewers. <laughs> Well, you know, we're, we are a couple of fools here on Locked on Angels sometimes, so uh, that, take that with a grain of salt. Hey, it's our third season here at Locked on Angels. We've been fans of this team for oh so many years, probably too many years, actually. Right. But here's the thing. We're here five days a week talking Angels baseball like no other show, like no other podcast. We're the only Angels podcast talking Angels baseball five days a week number one daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. On today's show, we're recapping that that game against the Marlins and got some interesting conversations from both Ron Washington and Perry Manassian that we would like to get into. Mike, let's talk about that game from yesterday where I felt like the world was crashing down like it usually does. <laughs> the Angels were able to overcome, though. It was a 4 nothing deficit, and that quickly uh, turned around surely, yep. sh- slowly but surely. <laughs> yeah, so they had some changes to the to the lineup. So Hicks was the DH, Thice was in at catcher, Moniak was in right field. And so the game started, John, and that first inning was really messy. And I immediately noticed, I think you noticed it as well, that the ump wasn't calling anything low or anything high for Chase Silseth. Like, yeah. it was really squeezed for him. And in the previous inning, uh, or in the next inning, for the Marlins pitcher, Mayer, he, he had a lot of... Um, give that there was a lot of room for him to be able to throw in the strike zone. So I immediately noticed that obviously I'm biased. I'm probably wrong, but that's what I noticed immediately with Chase Silseth, but he did Silseth follow the same pattern that Sandoval and Canning did struggled with throwing first pitch strikes, gave up a leadoff walk. Then Thice had a catcher's interference oh, no. that led to uh, Berger's RBI single, followed by Chisholm's R- RBI single. Then Moniak threw from right field, and he missed the cutoff man. He soared one to, to home plate. It bounces into home, was a little bit late. Then Johnny Barry Enright comes out onto the mound, and this is the third time in four games that he has had to come out in the first inning to talk to his starter. And, and Chase had 21 pitches and of those 21 pitches at that moment, 10 of them were outside of the zone. So he was really missing the zone and missing on that first pitch strike. And that's been the Achilles heel, right? The the issue yes. for the Angels since the start of the season. Can I just say about the catcher's interference, Matt, what are we doing? <laughs> this happened three times last year. I felt like that was behind us. I felt like that was all well and good. Yeah. Willing to give you a chance as the backup catcher. And it's just ridiculous that we're dealing with that. Again, stop reaching out for the pitches. Let them come to you. Also, why do you have to get up every single time to throw the ball back to the pitcher <laughs> and rainbow it back? Just yeah. drove me apps. I don't know if he's trying to slow down the game. I don't know if that's something he was told to do, Mike. But if that didn't drive you crazy, it drove me crazy. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah. So Silseth uh, got his first out on a on a strikeout, a swinging strikeout. Then he got a ground ball for a potential double play. Oof. Drury doesn't get to second base in time. So Neto was going to underhand it, realized, tried to throw it to first. They get nobody out on that play. Yeah, I and, think Drury was just too far shifted yes. to the right in order to even get there in time. It sounded like they, the at least Randazzo and Gooby said, you know, for Neto, he should have at least thrown to first to get yes. that out. 
I could see that he was trying to beat the runner to second, but I think it was Chisholm coming down the line. I don't right. think you're going to beat him to second base. There. Way too fast, right? And so then Silseth gets the second out on a splitter at the knees. was a nice recovery. And then the, the main issue that the Angels have had over the last few years, but especially last year, is when they get two outs, they don't shut the door. Yeah. And Silseth didn't shut the door. He gives up a two-run single to Gordon and made it 4 nothing. And then Silseth strikes out the final batter, Got everybody out on strikeouts, but had 36 total pitches in just the first inning, John. And and then the second inning kind of started the same way. Why don't you talk about that? Yeah, it's same thing as the first. Arise was uh, leading off again because they bat one through nine in the first inning. And he walked again. He continued to start batters off with a ball uh, and not a strike for the first pitch. He did recover and get the next two batters. 57 pitches through two innings, Mike. He finished with 76 pitches through three innings. Now there was a mound visit with the trainer seemed like maybe there was a fingernail issue or some sort of issue that caused him to have some trouble with his pitches. Uh, what's changed for angels pitchers from spring training to their inability to throw strike one at this point. Do you think it's the pressure of the season? Do you think it's the, we got to perform. Do you think it's they're a bunch of young guys? Cause it seemed like in spring they had it down. But yeah. that seems to have just fallen out the side of their head since the season started. And it's not just like it's the young guys. Like, it was Sandoval, and it was Canning. And yeah. those guys have been around for a bit. I, Silseth, maybe you expect him to, to struggle a bit. But the, they haven't. even the bullpen guys are not throwing strike one. And so I don't know what they're afraid of. I don't know what they're nervous about. I don't, yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's just a mechanics issue. Or it seems like it was a mindset issue that they really bought into in spring. But they've lost that mindset as they've started the regular season. It's not even a matter of being able to throw strike one. It's it's a matter of <laughs> getting it in the strike zone. I guess what I'm trying to say is it's not that they aren't doing it. It's that they can't do it. Yeah. It's like you can't yeah. throw at a target. Like uh, that's the weird thing to me. It's it's It seems such like a simple thing to be able to hit your target. And, and they're not doing that right. No. And so that's that's really concerning and something that we need to continue to talk about moving forward. Hey, the final line for Chase Silseth, three innings pitch, five hits, four runs, three earned, two walks, and five Ks. I told you, if you didn't have a good start, it was my fault because I picked him up <laughs> on my, you, you him on my up. <laughs> fantasy team, my stupid fantasy team. Uh, <laughs> Cisnero came in in the fourth. He gave up two hits, but he followed that up with a ground ball double play and a fly out to left. Jose Suarez followed Cisnero. Look. Everybody needs to back off Jose Suarez. The guy <laughs> oh, is coming okay. in it with without the lead, filling in and just getting outs and getting innings and didn't give up anything yesterday. Look, I know it's not ideal. That's not a, you don't want a situation where Jose Suarez comes in. Right. That's what he's there for. And the fact is, is that the Angels were able to turn it around because he didn't surrender any runs. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. know he left the game with two on and one out, but baby. That's what Adam Simber was doing there, man. That guy came in, got one pitch and two outs, and that's like the peak efficiency, right, Mike? Right. And so it was just great to see that. But listen, the Angels offense, they they needed to nickel and dime their way to the lead. They certainly did that. It started with a Ward leadoff double in the second. Uh, Ward tagged on a jury flyout to center field. Hicks drove in Ward with an RBI ground out to first. That made it 4-1 to one at that point. Top of the fourth, Trout hit his second home run of the year, 104 miles per hour, exit velocity, 412 feet. If you thought that was good, just hold on a second. <laughs> Top of the fifth, Sean Owell hits his first home run of the year. That was great to see. He's reached base in 33 straight games to start his career now. And then right after that, before I even had time to finish my tweet about Sean Owell, Trout hits a home run. So they went back to back his third of the year, 473 feet. 113 miles per hour exit velocity. That was Stanton territory right. in that park, Mike. Back right. when Stanton was a Marlin. It tied the game at four. There's some great numbers here. The longest home run distances in the StatCast era, which began in 2015, Mike Trout hit one 490 at the Coliseum against Oakland. Uh, 486 also at the Coliseum. He likes playing at the Coliseum. Right. 477 <laughs> in Colorado. And 473 today, or I should say yesterday in Miami, and then also 473 in Kansas City. So that was great 
yeah. to see as well. John, there was a great tr- uh, great quote from Trout after the game. He said, that's probably one of my better balls that I've hit, just barreling it and actually seeing it go out. It felt pretty good. I've been telling you for a couple of weeks, I just got to get back to myself. Today, I got back to that. And you could tell he really felt comfortable, even in that sixth inning uh, when they, when they uh, I'm sorry, the eighth inning, when he drew a walk, that was that was really huge too. You can just see that he's really, he's really got a good eye at the plate. We all know this, but you can see that he's getting, getting a pitch that he wants to hit and he's not being overwhelmed by the, the pitches that are being thrown to him. And so to see him get all of that, hit that home run, bomb it out, and then see him high-fiving and excited, excited in the dugout was, was really fun to see. Not bad for the 12th best player in baseball. Mike. That's, <laughs> uh, that's funny. Uh, they listen, they walked the bases loaded. Ward came up and, and, you know, had a competitive at bat, but he did ground out. It did score the run. So that made it five to four. I don't know what Drury and Hicks were thinking. They were swinging at first pitch when yeah. the Marlins pitcher couldn't even locate any pitches. And that's why the bases were loaded. Cause he walked everybody. And right. so I just don't understand what those guys were swinging at or why they're swinging on the first pitch. Um, listen, listen, they totally helped out that pitcher. The good news is that Ohapi came in later on in the game for Matt Thice. He tripled Joe Adele singled him in. Then Joe Adele steals two bases. And yeah. because he got to third base, Mike, there was a bot call and that made it seven to four. SD came in, closed this one out, got another big double play. The angels overcame a four run first inning in order to win this game. It's the first time they've done that since June 20th, 2021 against the Yanks. Remember that game where they went into, uh, uh, oh no, that was a different one. I was thinking of the July game where they went yeah. in the extra innings and while she tied it up and hit that grand slam. But this one was actually June 30th, 2021. They scored seven runs in the ninth to beat the Yankees. A uh, couple of questions here. Rendu, Ren, Rendu, Rendu, Rendon <laughs> drew. I'm trying to talk too fast. A 12 pitch walk in the eighth that started the rally. Does that earn him another day at the leadoff spot? I like that he had a competitive at bat that started the rally. I just don't know if he is what you want at the top of the order. He's he's taking a lot of pitches, which is good. And the he's hitters not, behind him are seeing a lot of pitches, which yes. is also key. He's just not doing anything offensively. So I, I guess if you're going to have him be out there, maybe run him out one more day. I think in this game, because of his competitive at bat, I would put him out there at the top of the order, one more game, but I really want to see a bit more, I guess a bit more activity at the top. However, this angel team doesn't really take too many pitches once you get deep into the order. And so having Rendon be somebody that will do that is good. I'd rather see him kind of in the middle of the order because those uh, at bats by Drury and Hicks were terrible yeah. with the bases loaded and to have a Rendon taking some pitches, maybe earning another walk could have gotten them, another run right and then speaking of, of hicks johnny he's playing like the guy that the yanks dfa'd right last year. and then adele has come in the last two games and he's offensively done well he stole two bases last night shouldn't he be out there over hicks i believe it yeah i mean and every time he goes out there he's trying to steal bases and he's using his speed and he in fact he got the first two stolen bases the angels have gotten all season mike and they're they both belong to joe adele yeah so if this is the year where you're going to assess what you have, then you need to give the bats to Mickey Moniak and Joe Adele. We're going to need some length out of our starters. And today, Tyler Anderson is going. Can he do that? That's going to be the big question. And we'll certainly talk about that on tomorrow's Locked On Angels. But we appreciate you making Locked On Angels your first listen every single day. The Angels are playing the Marlins today, 340 Pacific time. You can catch every pitch of the Angels hometown broadcast on Sirius XM with the SXM app. Just search Angels. Coming up on Lockdown Angels, can the Angels' young core be like the Orioles' young core? What would it take for that to happen? Well, Ron Washington has some thoughts on that, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. Lockdown Angels is brought to you by Amazon Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports, from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV provides an amazing viewing experience with smart TVs, as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV. The Fire TV stick provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. And it also includes all of us 
at Locked On and Locked On Angels. So we're excited about that. Plus some of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels lets you dive into the game analysis, highlights, and so much more to keep you up to date on the latest in the world of sports. So check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. And to learn more, visit amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. That's amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. This is the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every single day. Every day, it's time to make the switch from your regular sports viewing and check out Locked On Sports today. It's a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every single day to bring you the biggest stories from across the sports world. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news. It's streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. It's part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team Every day. And speaking of your team, the Angels, your team, are playing the Marlins again at 340 Pacific Time this afternoon, today, Tuesday. Catch every pitch of the Angels hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app. Just search Angels. Johnny, I want to share something that Wash said about the Baltimore Orioles this past weekend. And you mean compared, the Baltimore Orioles? Yeah, that's your that's your line. Uh, that, that, compared, that compared the Orioles' young players and young core to, to ours. So I'm going to read to you what he said, and then I want, to, I want to get your thoughts and your opinion on what he said. So he mm-hmm. said this past weekend he was reflecting on where the Orioles came from and how they rebuilt and how they have all these young players. He said, I watched them. And I knew that they were coming when they were young and they were getting their tails beat regularly. Now they've learned how to play and they've learned how to win ball games. And then he was asked if his team might be able to follow the Orioles trajectory. And he says, we don't think that we will be that Hmm. not just think about it. We're going to do that, but we have to stay in the process. We've got to work. We've got to learn. We've got to apply. That's the game of baseball, and that's what it's all about. Working, learning, applying, and you're, we're going to do that. He promises that they're going to do that. Now, in order to get there, the O's had to build one of the best farm systems, right? We all know about Adley Rutschman and Grayson Rodriguez and Jackson Holiday, who's not even in the majors, right? Yeah, and talk <laughs> and about then, service time manipulation right. when, you, when you bring Tony Kemp in. Right. I love Tony Kemp. Don't get me wrong. Yes, but not over Jackson Holiday. <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> Right. And then the O's were able to make a really great trade for Corbin Burns and not lose a bunch of people. So the Angels farm system, obviously, it's it's regarded as not great. Not great, Bob. Everydayers are struggling with their farm system. You got into a fun debate on Super Halo Bros on Twitter just a couple days ago about that. And, And the reason is because many of these players, why the farm system isn't highly regarded, is many of the players are in the majors. And they haven't been considered a part of the farm system. Wash said, we've got a lot of youth that's out there. And every time they go out there, it's a learning experience. We just have to help them learn and grow and be able to deal with the ups and downs and let their abilities grow and let all of that continue to grow. And we're not going to stop working. We're going to continue to work for baseball, talk baseball, get them everything that they need to be good baseball players. And then somewhere along the line, we're going to find out who we are and what we can do. And then we'll be consistent. So Johnny couple thoughts here, Mm -hmm. and I would love your thoughts. Uh, A couple questions for you. First, this comparison to the O's and their young core and the Angels' young core, is is this in the realm of possibility that the Angels could develop some of these young guys and they could become similar to the Rutschmans and the Rodriguez's of the Orioles? I think what concerns me most is the fact that these guys are really learning at the major league level. And the problem with that is, is that the minor leagues haven't really delivered anybody at a great level to the majors. Uh, I can't think of the last great prospect we really had that, you know, developed time in the major or the minors and then came up to the majors and and really showed us something. I mean, look at how much time Joe Adele has spent between the majors and the minors. You and I agreed that he needed a full season last year in AAA to just get right and get his defense down and have a confident season. And I think that we're going to see that from Joe Adele this season, but Mike, really it's, it's hard to look around and see how the angels have developed minor leaguers over the years, because there really aren't that many to point to and be like, Oh, there's a really well-developed prospect. Yeah. So what they've done is they've rushed these guys that they've just drafted into the majors. I mean, I know Detmers drafted 2020. He was making his debut in 2021. 
and he's learning. And he even said as much that it's, it's hard sometimes when you are learning things about just being a ball player on a major league team, like, you know, what bus do I get on? And yeah. what, you know, what, where's my hotel room, that sort of thing. Yeah. And I say all that because the, the the Orioles have a good farm system yeah, and they have good player development. And one of the criticisms that we often bring up on this show is the lack of player development is the lack of investment in the minor leagues. Now, I think since Perry Manassian has been there, they've taken steps toward bettering that for these guys. It seems like the housing situation is better than it was. They've hired some more coaches than they've ever had in the last few decades for the minor leagues. So I think those are all very good things. And that's how you grow and develop a, a team with a farm system. And the same thing with Barry Enright wanting the pitching labs and the hitting labs yeah. at the spring training facilities. Those things have to happen. And the angels haven't had that. And so my concern here is yes, I could see these guys blossoming and learning at the major league level. They just haven't had much player development in the minors behind them. What about you? What do you say about this? I, I, I agree with you. I think that, the, the tension I'm writing, and I would love your I'd love your thought on this. The tension I'm writing is do do I want a really terrible losing season? No, to, but know that we've got a Jackson Holiday, Adley Rutschman type of player or players coming up. Or do I prefer letting Nolan Shawnawell and Zach Neto and Logan Ohapi develop in the majors. I, I, I struggle with that. What do you think? That's the thing is you have no choice. There, there are no yeah. holidays. There are yeah. no Rutschmans in the minor leagues. There's some guys that we're excited about Caden Dana and, and uh, who else? Am I Nelson Rada. Mm -hmm. Nelson Rada. Thank you. We're excited about those guys, but the angels don't really have much of an option unless it is to run out these young guys. But the truth yeah. is, you know, I got in, like you mentioned that Twitter conversation, Look, I, I listed out the good things that Perry has done because he's actually brought in pieces for the future. How are they going to turn out? I don't know. Yeah. Because they're unproven prospects. It doesn't mean that we're not in a good place because we have them. It means that, hey, let these guys figure it out. Let's see what happens with these guys because it's kind of the only choice the Angels have right now. If that if there was a choice, though, if the Angels could have those guys either in the majors or – had the option of letting them develop in the minors. What would you prefer? Would you rather have a couple of losing seasons knowing that they're coming? Or do you, do you really appreciate having them in the major league level right now? If we had an Orioles de player development system, I would, I would pick the option where they stay in the minors and mm. develop, but mm. the best place for them to be right now is with Ron Washington. Agreed. I truly, truly believe that. And putting them in the minor leagues, Look, I, I'm sure that coaching is good. I'm sure that there's consistency up and down the minors. Ron Washington is trying to really hammer that home. We heard a lot about that in spring training. But the truth is, I don't think there's any better place than for these guys than to be around Ron, Ron Washington this season. Locked on Angels is brought to you by FanDuel. The sports calendar is loaded this time of year, and FanDuel is making it even more exciting to get in on all of the action. Because right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 200 bucks that you can use to bet on the tournament, MLB, NBA, even hockey. You ever bet on hockey, John? I've never bet on hockey before. That's interesting. Uh, my friend Casey would probably bet on hockey. But you can bet on whatever you'd like. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make sure you go to that website because when you do, FanDuel.com slash locked on, they're going to know that you came from Locked On Angels, and then that way they know that you heard it here and everybody's a happy camper. So FanDuel.com slash Locked On. Make your first big bet and get your first big win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Mike, we uh, had ourselves a great article come from Sam Blum of The Athletic when he spoke to Perry Manassian last week, and he asked some really important questions. And this week, we're going to cover each of the questions that he asked Perry Manassian uh, once per episode. So I think that's going to lead to some really great conversation. I don't want to sidetrack our conversation, but people need to back off. Sam Blum, They're, they get so upset when I he like talks. Sam. I know when he <laughs> when he talks about the stuff about yeah. this team, people get all mad at him. It's, it's true. Just, <laughs> Sam's, asking, Sam's asking questions, and and it, it may seem like he does skew a bit negative, but there isn't isn't too much 
positivity around how the Angels have been operating over the last 10 years. So here's the, here's the difference. That's, Mike, give him Trout, a break. <laughs> Mike Trout will hit a home run and Sam will say, Mike Trout hit his third home run of the season. 100 and or 400 something feet. And that'll be it. But for us, we'll tweet it and go 473 yeah. feet. Oh my God. Like, yeah, Sam's not going to do that. We'll right. do that for you. Yes. Yeah. So there Sam's you. an unbiased reporter, right? Correct. <laughs> so he did ask Perry a few questions. We're going to share each of those questions in each episode this week. Got a couple of them for you right now. So he asked Perry, Trout wanted the team to aggressively pursue free agents. That didn't happen. <laughs> Why not? And how would you assess the offseason? So here's Perry's answer. He said, I guess I would say, the, I lo, that sounds so Perry, right? I guess I would say that the moves we made might not be headliners per se. No, duh. Uh, right. I think some of the moves we made and some of the players we've, we have, we've seen, at least what we've communicated, they've been pretty excited about this year. Our players, all of our players, and that's what I love about this group. It's really a competitive group. They all want to be better. Notice how he pivoted. Uh, Mike, mm -hmm. first and foremost, Mike cares. Mike wants to win as bad as anybody. I think he's put himself in a really good spot. He's done the work. As soon as he came into camp, the work that he did in camp was really great. The amount of games he played, the amount of at-bats he's gotten, how strong he is. I think he's due for a big year, and we're going to let our play do our talking. That's something that we've talked about a lot, and we're going to go and play the games and play baseball and see what happens. John, that phrase, mm -hmm. let our play do the talking has been thrown out a whole lot. It's almost like a, don't, don't watch this hand. Yes. Pay attention to this hand. Like, what do, what do you make of that phrase? Is that something <laughs> that you think they've all adopted? Where did it come from? Right. It just comes from the fact that they didn't want to build a team from free agency and the trade route. And I think there's an element of, Hey, let's, let's assess what we have this season. It's something that you and I and a lot of Angel fans have wanted for a long time is yeah. to let the kids play, as yeah. they always say. However, you can't come out and say that because then it means you're not competitive. It means that you might not make the playoffs. And so, again, like you said, it's it's don't look over here. Watch what yeah. I'm saying over here. It's it's they want to try to convince us of the story that this team is bound for the playoffs and and whatnot. When sure, maybe they have a great season. Maybe all these young guys break out. I would love that as yep. an angel fan. I'm rooting for these guys, but it's certainly much easier to be competitive and make the playoffs. When you add the necessary free agents yep. that the angels did not do this off season. I know that we were clamoring for a Jordan Montgomery or a Blake Snell. Heck at this point, you could take a, a Michael Waka or a Seth Lugo who are now, with the Royals, you know what I'm saying? They yeah. just didn't address all the areas that they needed to because the excuse, and I'm using excuse kind of lightly, is, well, we want to see what our young guys can do. And yeah. I, I just don't buy that. Now, uh, carrying, carrying that thought, John, yeah. here's the second question that Sam asked. He said, do you feel like there's a playoff team in this roster somewhere? And so Perry responded, to me, I don't like to predict. <laughs> it just makes me laugh. Yeah. <laughs> he said, uh, what are we going to do every day? I have the utmost confidence in our manager, our coaching staff, and the group of players that have taken the every day very, very seriously, put everything that they have into that particular day, and they go and play and see what happens. There's some guys, there's some really interesting players on the roster from a youth standpoint that we want to take a look at. It's like, okay, do we get somebody or do we allow this person to play? You just said that, John. I want your thoughts on that for a moment. Uh, do, do we go get a starter or do we want to see Chase Silseth or do we want to see Reed Detmers in the rotation? And those were the debates that we had. Where we felt we needed the most help was the bullpen. So that's where we attacked and we tried to do it with some impact. And we looked at the numbers and we're going to see how it all plays out. You don't know until you start playing where all of this is going to go. John. That seemed like it was the strategy, and you hinted at it as you talked. That seemed like it was a strategy from the beginning. Do you think it wasn't communicated because we're stupid? Like, like, like the fans. I think the fans. Honestly, I would have been more excited if they just came out and said, "We're gonna, we're gonna run with the young guys." Yes, and 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 that would that would really amp me up instead of holding on to hope. Like, oh, Snell's gone, and oh, Montgomery's gone, and oh, right. this guy's gone. Like that, I felt like didn't help your fan base. Am I wrong? No, I think you're absolutely right. It, it was it was a frustrating offseason, 
because they told us early we're gonna early we're gonna be aggressive we're gonna be out there on the trade market and I, you know there was an article about how some of the trades that they were pitched cost some of their young guys that they probably don't want to give up so I totally yeah. understand that but to not add during free agency in fact to to wait until before spring training starts for Artie Marino to come out and say yeah we're gonna cut back payroll this <laughs> right. year that that was the plan all along I mean. Talk about uh, what's the like a carrot dangling in front of a horse. That's yeah. what they've done to their fan base. And I think that's honestly the suckiest part about all this. It's disrespectful. Like you said, I'd get amped up if they said, you know what? This is the year we're going to let the young guys play and figure it out. We'll attack the areas that we need to improve upon. So I appreciate them going after the bullpen. But to to leave us hanging all offseason and then also say, we plan on being competitive. We really want to win. Artie wants to win, but you don't do the obvious moves that help you win, especially Mike, especially, and I'm finger pointing right now. <laughs> if you're listening on the audio side, when Mike Trout is begging you to make moves is begging you to go out and get free agents. Yeah. That to me is the most disrespectful thing. And look, Trout's a good guy. He's going to play with these young guys. He's going to lead the team like he did yesterday. He's going to amp them up. But at the same time, I think it's really disrespectful to Mike Trout, the best player on your team and in baseball, not number 12, and <laughs> tell him, ah, you know what? We're going to have to sit this one out. I think it's of the utmost disrespect, in my opinion. We're going to cover more of what Perry said throughout the week on each episode of Locked On Angels. And thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. Every day is make your second listen, Locked On Sports Today. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. And you can find Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and now available on the free Fire TV's channel app. And also, remember, Angel fans, they're playing the Marlins today. 340 Pacific time. You can catch every pitch of the Angels hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app. Just search Angels. Hey, give us a follow at Locked on Angels on Twitter and at Super Halo Bros on Twitter and Instagram. Whether you're watching or listening to today's show, come on over to YouTube, get in the comment section, hit that like button on your way down while you're writing a comment. We'd love to hear from you. It's the best way to get into the conversation with us. Mike, what do we have on deck for tomorrow's show? Well, we're here to recap game two against the Marlins, and it is Tyler Anderson on the mound. And we're hopeful, we're hopeful that Woo! maybe this could be Boy. a good game. Uh, it's Tyler Anderson. So we're we're going to keep our fingers crossed and our eyes crossed and everything crossed, and we're going to recap the game tomorrow on Locked On Angels. All right, we're looking forward to that. We hope you'll come back and join us again. Until then, my name is John, and that's my brother Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother John. Thanks for being here with us, and we'll see you back here on Wednesday. I, mean, I, 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 I didn't I mean, feel like myself. I didn't feel like myself yesterday. I don't know what that was about. <laughs> this is stupid. <laughs>